Welcome to the podcast today. I am excited to share on this podcast today. I have been preparing, (laughs) trying to figure out the best way to share with you about my trip to Wales. For those of you that don't know, I was able to go to Wales with some, most of my siblings, my parents, and some of their children. And we went in July, end of July, beginning of August. So it's been about a month since I went there. And it was amazing. I feel like the trip was about as good as it could have been. The weather was fabulous. I was able to see so many places that my ancestors lived and able to look at all kinds of tourist places too in the Lynn Peninsula in Wales. And it was a lot of fun. And I know that a lot of you would love to do something similar where you go back to a place that your ancestors lived and go visit there and visit, you know, their homes, cemeteries, places that they lived and that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that this episode is not just, you know, a travelogue of all the places I saw, but it is helpful to see kind of the methods that we use to find locations and then you know, obviously sharing some photos and things like that. To start out, this trip was, the idea was last year, my brother came up with this idea. So in 2000, no, in 1924, my grandma, my mom's mom, came to Canada from Wales with her parents. So this summer was 100 years since that time. So my brother decided hey, how about whoever wants to go? We organize this trip and any cousins can come or whatever. Ended up being my parents and myself and four other siblings and then some of their kids. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you kind of the general organization that we did for this trip and then show you specifically how we located some locations that my ancestors lived. I'm going to focus on my great great grandmother kind of show how you can piece together their timeline of the places that they lived and then i'll show you us visiting those places okay so i hope this works okay i hope it's helpful for you i hope it inspires you to do something similar to be able to find those locations that your ancestors lived and then go visit now you don't have to go across the ocean you don't have to travel super far to visit where your ancestors lived you might, but if your ancestors live close, like I have a lot of ancestors that lived in Canada for a long time, some that lived close to me for the past hundred years, but I haven't visited where those houses are for everyone. I haven't figured out what land was theirs. And so you can do the same thing close. You don't have to travel far. So something I am going to try to do with some of my closer ancestors. All right. So first, I just want to share some general organization that we did for this trip. My brother did most of the organizing, most of the organizing. You would think that me as a genealogist that I would have, but no, apparently he was better at that sort of thing. He also speaks Welsh so that I feel like that helped a lot with like knowing where to go. He's in like a Welsh, Welsh class and choir so a lot of recommendations he got from other people that live in Wales or that are familiar with Wales anyways so he planned out like our itinerary possible itinerary for the whole 10 days that we were there so he kind of first when we got there we hiked a mountain (laughs) which I don't think my ancestors did but it was a the tallest mountain in in the United Kingdom or something or in England and Wales I'm not sure So we helped hike to Mount Snowden. That was really cool. And so he found, you know, different things like that that are kind of touristy things to do in northern Wales so that we could experience those sorts of things while we were there, too. We visited like five different castles and we kind of just worked that into the itinerary. So he had kind of possible things we could do each day, kind of grouped those together. And then we just the night before we would decide what we're going to do the next day and then map it all out and do it. Everything was within like 30 miles. And so we didn't have to travel super far. The driving in Northern Wales was a little 
what's the word scary interesting I don't know <laughs> like the roads are super skinny and pretty much one car can fit most of the time except there's like sometimes a little bit of space so you can move over to let another car go past so driving 30 miles miles took about an hour so it was about I mean it was not quick driving around but everything was relatively close within you know an hour or less so we would plan out the day the night before and then go explore and we were able to see everything that I wanted to see and then some and it was a lot of fun so my brother organized that itinerary he had links to you know different things we could do and then he also created a map of all the locations that we might, might want to visit now the map was great, I feel like, to just get a visual of where things were, but practically, I feel like it didn't work great. <laughs> I think the reception was not great in Northern Wales, and so we couldn't rely on a map as we're driving along. We had to kind of plan it out before we left and put it into the car GPS. Um, and, and the map, I found that when I would access it on my phone, I'd like accidentally drag the location and put it somewhere else and it just did not work great I don't know if that was just me or what but I feel like just getting really solid on the places that you're going each day is helpful than relying on like one of those google my maps that I've talked about here before <laughs> okay all right I feel like that's about the general org organization we kind of just plan different places to go and That's it. All right, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and then I'll show you kind of the process of how how we did this. So like I said, my grandma was born in Abersol, Wales in 1920. Her family went to Canada in 1924 and eventually settled in southern Alberta, where I li live now. Her father was a miner and was likely hopeful to find more financial opportunity in Canada. He had already traveled to North America like eight times or something. He was a bit of a wanderer, explorer, um, but his wife and daughter, they all moved to Canada in 1924. They did not really gain financial opportunity in Canada. He traveled around working a lot, was a miner for a time until that mine closed in Tabor, and then just did general labor around to survive. He passed away in 1940, leaving my great-grandmother at age 45 with some young children still at home. And then she managed to work and provide for her kids until she passed away in 1985. So I did meet my Nana, is what we called her, but I was only one, one and a half when she passed away, so I don't remember her at all. So this is where they are from. I'll zoom in a bit more here. So this is called the Hlin Peninsula. I like practicing all these Welsh <laughs> things. I guess double L is like a huh, huh, huh sound. Anyways, not very good at it. So they lived here in the Hlin Peninsula, and she was born right here where this circle is in Aberso. Zoom in there. Oh, no, not where that is. Aberso is right here. Okay, so that's, they lived in all of these in Burncrows, Butunog, and we stayed up here at Afonwen. There's a castle here at Cricketh. Anyways, lots of cool stuff to see there. But all of this, like from, from, from Cricketh all the way down to Aberdaran is like 30 miles. So this is all very closely contained. So he first looked at records to find places to visit, to find homes, that sort of thing. So in Wales, houses had names. <laughs> so this was my great, great grandmother who were going to kind of follow her life to find the places that she lived. She was born at Penralch in Rue. Okay, Penralch is the name of the house or the farm. Okay. And so we have when she was born in 1868, she was living there. So, okay, so we kind of didn't necessarily write on a timeline for everywhere, but as we mapped and found locations, we started recording things about their lives to find out where they lived. Okay, so from that record, we know that she was born at Penralch in Rue. Okay, then 
we we looked at the next record in time that we have was the 1871 census. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. Here she is, Ellen. She was two years old there. And you can see the house here is Penrach, Penrach, Penrach. Okay, so there's three different households that were all at the same name of house. So we can assume this is maybe a farm with multiple houses or maybe multiple like apartments in a house. We're not sure. Okay, but her father was a general laborer. The person above was a shopkeeper. person below was a farmer of 14 acres. Okay, so maybe that was the owner of the farm. I'm not sure. But they were still living at Penrill when she was two years old. Okay, then when the 1881 census, this first column is address again, and you can see they're at Penrill still. There's still multiple houses here. You can see that this one's number one, number two, number three. So they were in the number three house. Her father is now listed as a farmer, and here she is, Ellen, at 12 years old. All right, then in 1889, we have a record for the birth of her son. So in 1889... Penrall, you can see there in Rue, William John, and there's no father listed. And Ellen Jones is listed as a dressmaker, but she's living at Penrall. Okay. So now we have from 1868 when she was born to 1889, she's apparently lived at home. Now she might have left often in Wales. They would leave when they were a young teenager to go work as a servant or farm labor or whatever at other people's houses. So she could have done that. We just don't have a census at that time. Okay, now we've got the 1891 census. So here she is. Ellen is 22. She's single. You can see her son, William J. William John is listed as grandson because they're living with her parents and he's one years old. So you can see here's Penrill again. You can see the one up here, shop Penrill, Penrill, and then another Penrill, another Penrill. Okay, so <laughs> there's multiple residences at this Penrall, right? All right, then the next record we have is in 1893, the birth of her another son. She was now married to a William Jones. So her last name was also Jones. <laughs> you can see Ellen Jones, formerly Jones. There's a lot of Joneses in Wales. <laughs> okay, so in 1893, Penrall is where they were living or where, where the son was born and where they were living, right? The residence was Penrall. But now she's married. All right. Now in 1894, we these are things we already knew. We didn't have to do a lot of research for for this generation of people, but we know that her husband William passed away in a mining accident in 1894. So my brother found this newspaper uh, article that listed people listed the casualties from the mining accident. We can see William Jones, age 28, from St. Tedwell's Terrace, Abersall, and he was married with two children. So we know that. One son, he was the father, but there was another son that her, his wife had had before. So they had two children at the time of his death. So now we go back to that timeline. We know that she was born in Penrall. She lived there at least until 1893. And then 1894, they were living at St. Tuttle's Terrace. Now, the reason I know that that's right is because we have records for later. So sometimes, you know, you got to backtrack and go forward and then go back again. So now, the next record we have of her life is in 1895, she had a daughter, and this is my great-grandmother. She was born at St. Tadwell's Terrace in Lenangan, and you can see there's no father listed, but it lists Ellen Jones, the widow of William Jones, okay? So my great-grandmother always claimed this William Jones as her father, even though he died 11 months before she was born. We know that Ellen was living at St. Tuttle's Terrace now in Lenangan, which is actually, it was actually Abersol, but that was a part of Lenangan. Okay. Next record we have is showing you these records so you can see, you know, what types of records you can find addresses. Now in Wales, they list the name, but other countries, obviously they keep addresses different. In the United States, they actually have, you know, addresses, right? And records are going to be different depending on what information they record and that sort of thing. But in England and Wales, they're going to find records like this where it lists where they were born. This is a marriage, lists their residence, that time of marriage, etc. Okay. So here's Ellen Jones. She remarried in 1898. This a widow that all matches, right? And then St. Tudwell's Terrace, Abersol, which is part of 
the Lenangan Parish. Okay. So she's still at, at St. Tidwell's Terrace. I guess they say it's in Tidwell's, Tidwell's, right? Okay. <laughs> now the 1901 census is kind of hard to read, but here's St. Tidwell's Terrace. And we have Ellen Griffith now. She had remarried Griffith there. Okay, so she's Ellen Griffith. And then we have her son, Ellen, um, Evan Jones, from that first marriage. Kate Jones, my great-grandma. And then Thomas Penry Griffith, who was from the second second marriage. And if you look over here, I cut it off, but she was widowed by that time. So that second husband had passed away by after just three years or less of marriage. Okay, so then in the 1911 census, she's still at St. Tidwell's Terrace. And let's just zoom through these. And then in 1921, she's still at St. Tidwell's Terrace, number two. Okay. In this 1921 census, my grandma had been born. So here's Kate Perry. She had now married. My great grandmother had married John Perry. He wasn't living there. I think he was off working somewhere. And then Nellie Jones Perry is my grandmother was living there. So Kate Perry actually had Richard Emerson Jones before she married John Perry. And then uh, Nellie Jones Perry. Nellie Jones Perry um, was my grandma. Okay. Anyways, so the point is they're still at St. Tidwell's Terrace, number two. This is um, a information about burial records. So we got given this from family in Wales. And so it lists William Jones from St. Tidwell's Terrace, Aberso. It says she, he died in... June 23rd, 1894, was 30 years old. And then Ellen Roberts died in 1928. Okay, so whatever family wrote this down, it's Kate Canada's mother. That's what I guess they called my great grandma. They called her Kate Canada because she went to Canada and her name was Kate. So, <laughs> so this was this was her Kate's mother, Ellen. She was Roberts because her third husband's last name was Roberts. So and this doesn't write it on there, but this was the cemetery inscriptions from the Landagunig Church in Wales. Okay. So now we have that she was born at Penarol. She lived there at least until 1893. Then she moved to St. Tedwell's Terrace in Aberso and then was buried at the Landagunig Church. All right. So we've kind of got the timeline of her life. We got two houses that she lived at, and then we know the church that she was buried at. Okay, so you can do that same thing with your ancestors. Just look at all of those records you have. Maybe you have birth, marriage, death records. Maybe you have an obituary that lists where they lived. Some of my ancestors, they didn't have addresses, right? They were farmers. So you have to look at land records to try to figure out where their land was. Newspaper records can be really helpful for that because it might even describe their land if they're selling it or if sometimes there's auctions or things like that or, or they changed parcels of land. Or it might give a description of where their land was. Um, so you just kind of have to look through all the records you have and just start writing out all the places that your ancestors lived. Make a timeline to kind of see how long they were at each place. Maybe you don't want to visit every single little place that they lived at, but you might want to visit the ones where they raised their children, where they lived there for, you know, multiple years to kind of see what their life might have been like at that place. So sometimes it is tricky to find these places, especially in Wales when it's just like a name <laughs> of a place. Okay. So my my brother spent uh, a lot of time looking for these places on old maps. So there's this website, Historic Place Names, for place names. I'm not sure if it's specific to Wales or if there's England ones there too, maybe. Anyways, you can check out, just look for old maps for the country or the county that your ancestors lived because boundaries changed, buildings got torn down, and things like that. So we found this Penny Ralt and kind of lengthened down the spelling of it there. And then there's another map place that we found here that then lists out Penn Ralt Farm. So you can see that that's, it's the same place. If you zoom down, you can figure it out. But this one, you can see that there's Siop Penn Ralt and the translation for that in Welsh is shop Penrault. So you, if you remember that one census, it had shop Penrault that some people lived there. Some, and I'm guessing Penrault Farm. There's multiple houses that the people lived in there. Okay, 
So then next you look on Google Maps and see if you can find where that is. So here we see that there's a shop pen route there. There's a house right here, right at the corner. And then there's these houses back here this, that matches this pen route farm, right? Pen route farm. This one has a different name for that place. So I'm not sure if that part counted as part of pen route farm or not, but there it is there. Okay, so then you can start mapping it out and start um, plotting those places, seeing which ones you want to go to. So we drove to this place. This is Penrel. They have this sign there. This is that house right on the edge that is like right here. Okay, so we stopped here, got a picture, and then drove down this lane. And this house is actually for sale right now. <laughs> and so it was empty, so we spent our time you know, we took our time looking around and looking in the windows and all that sort of thing. Okay, so that's that's what that house right on the corner looks like. So I'm not sure which house they lived at, if they were at this house or if they were back. Once you went down the lane, there was this house here. So this house is for sale. Looks like there is an old house there that has started falling down. Maybe the roof was taken down because it was falling apart or whatever. So again, I'm not sure exactly what building my great -grand great great grandmother and her parents lived at but this is where the farm is here's my family who was there when we were checking it out so here is my grandma she went back to wales a few times i think three times two or three times this was when she went with my mom in the year 2000 i think and so you can see her in front of that first house at penrell all right, so that's that one house that we went and visited. And now we're going to try to find this St. Tidwell's Terrace. Okay. Now, growing up, we were told that my grandma was born at the House of Bryn in Abersol. Okay. So when we saw all these places with St. Tidwell's Terrace, we were like, well, was she born at that same place? Or were they like sent to a house with a midwife or something that was called Bryn? And my my brother was able to figure that out. So here's Abersol. Okay, so when we're going to Abersol now. All right, so on that old map, there's, he looked up Bryn in Abersol. And so he went in and looked at all the different Bryns, and there's this one that says St. Tidwell's Terrace here. So, and because family have been there before, we knew that this was the right one. So I'm not sure at what point it started to be calling, it started being called Bryn, um, but St. Tidwell's Terrace is right there too, okay? So with maps, you just kind of have to look. If you can find old maps, they'll often have, you know, the old addresses and things, and then you compare that to what you have today to try to figure out where they are. This, we knew for sure that we had the right place because my grandma had visited there. She visited there with her mom in the 60s, and so, I mean, that's how we knew for sure. Not everywhere was like that, but with maps and finding the houses in the right locations, we were pretty confident that we found the right places and other ones that we visited. So here's just to get an idea. So here's Penrell is over here, and here's St. Tidwell's Terraces in Abersol here. Abersol is now like very touristy place. The, the English come and stay there, and it's quite a high-end little town there. So here's some older pictures of my grandma. Here is from the 60s. I guess she went back there with uh, my great-grandmother in 1961. So here's her standing in front of St. Tidwell's Terrace. The number two is the one that they lived at. And this is like the backside. Here's the alley. And then you can walk around to the front. And this is what it looks like there. So this is when we when we went there that we walked around to the other side is kind of like a private yard uh, but we talked to the people that were staying there and they let us explore and look around and and get pictures and all of that um, so you can see this is a back shed so my great great grandmother they would in the summer they would leave the house and they would go stay in this back shed while people would come and vacation there and and pay to live and to stay in their house so that back shed is still there. And there's actually still this outhouse that the owners or the people that were there said that this was an original outhouse. So that was kind of cool. I did not get a picture of myself in there. <laughs> but So then here is us just standing in the same place that my grandmother stood in that other picture we have there. 
I was going to put them side by side, but I didn't. So here you can see that other one there. And then we're standing there, the typical, the like classic picture, the house of Bryn, you can see there. So I've had other cousins go visit and we all make sure to get a picture right here, like our grandma. So then my mom found this old picture. We're not sure exactly who this is standing there in the picture, but this is St. Edward's Terrace. This is that house of Bryn. The same one that my grandma was born at, my great-grandma was born at, and my great-great-grandmother lived there for at least 20, 30 years about. Okay, so you can see that it's the same. They've just built on some different things here. And this beach is literally right down the hill from their house, like a five-minute walk. It is, it's beautiful. So there we have, we visited the house of Penrill and St. Tidwell's Terrace, and then she's buried at the Landaguning Church. So then we had to find where that was. Again, my brother did that. <laughs> but here is Aberso, where they lived, and then here's Landaguning. They were buried there because my great-great-grandmother's family was all buried there at that church. Her first husband, William, was buried there, and she was also buried there. So interesting story with this church. So my brother contacted... I'm not even sure how he got a hold of someone that kind of manages the church there. It's no longer a, a church that they use for service or anything. He contacted someone there and they, you know, agreed to meet us there to be able to see inside the church. And he had like an index of all the people that were buried there to be able to find headstones. And he wanted us to get a picture taken so we could be in their local newspaper. Because I guess, I'm not sure how long ago, but the community was going to, or the, the maybe people who own the church, the Anglican church, I'm not sure, wanted to sell the church. They didn't see a need for it. It wasn't being used anymore. People weren't attending that church, so they wanted to sell it. But a group of the community got together and they said, we'll take care of it, we'll manage it, and they kept it. So he wanted to write about our visit there to show the community that it is of use, that this church is of use, the cemetery is of use, that it still is of value to keep. So that was really cool. This is my brother talking to him on the phone to kind of set up when we were going to go there. So a lot of the information that we had for this trip was from family. So my, my mom had gone back in 2000 with her mom and sister and was given this information from a cousin that lists all of the family that is buried at this Landagooning church. And there's a lot. <laughs> and so before we went there, I didn't want to just go there with this kind of hodgepodge, you know, article or pages document. Because some of these people, like, sure, they're family, but we didn't necessarily need to find, like, all 60 or 50, however many ones there were that were buried in the cemetery. So we went through and I mapped out like which ones are direct line that we would want to see their headstones. So that's what I did here. I used a pen and paper because reception was not great on there. It was I just wanted to have something I could look at and didn't need to rely on my phone to load and to be able to see this information. So I just mapped out. So here's William Jones and Ellen Roberts. She was at that time this great great grandmother that we've been following through. So that was them. And then just put this arrow to her parents so that we know like who is who because they're both Joneses. There's lots of Joneses. <laughs> okay. So then her parents were William Jones and Catherine Jones. Anyways, and then their parents. And then we have Griffith Jones's parents down here and Ann Jones's parents here. And then we have this William Jones's parents here. So interesting that we, after those five generations, that we got to John Hughes, who is where the patronymic ended. Okay, the, if you're familiar familiar with patronymics in Wales, it used to be like John App Hughes. So it'd be John, son of Hugh, John App Hugh. And, or there'd be John, son of Perry, would be John App Harry, which would turn into Perry. And then William App John would turn into William Jones, William, son of John. So, that's how, so this William Jones was the last patronymically named 
ancestor in that line because then they just continue with the Jones name instead of being Griffith. I guess App William would be Williams. Griffith Williams would have been what it would have been as you went down the line. Anyways, so patronymics would be even more confusing, but that's why in Wales we have so many Joneses because that comes from having a father with the, with the name John. Anyways, that was really cool to us to be able to see that first, the end of the patronymic naming pattern. So here is just where we're meeting with this guy who helped out, helped out with, yeah. So he helped out with us finding the, where all the headstones were. That's kind of what the graveyard looked like. It was very big. And so it was really helpful having him there. Turns out they were all buried in a very close area right at the front by the church. Um, but it was, it was neat to have that help from him. So then here is that first generation headstone of my great great grandparents, William Jones. He's the one that died in the mining accident. It even lists that on his headstone there. And then Ellen Roberts is shown here at the bottom. And then here is the John Hughes. It's really hard to read, but it says in memory of Lowry Williams, wife of John Hughes. And then it says also deposited the remains of the above John Hughes, who died in 1802. So Lowry, his wife, died in 1782, and he died in 1802. So those were the furthest back direct lines that were buried in that cemetery. But having four generations, five generations, I believe, that were buried there was very, very cool. So we just have a picture of us by the church. That church was a really cool-looking church. It uh, has, like, this old tower and everything. We were able to go inside. It was really neat. All right. So I feel like I shared a lot. That was a lot about um, kind of how we mapped out those locations. But really, it varies so much from location to location to tell you absolutely how you should do it. You just got to find the records, find those places that are listed on the records, and then see if you can find where they are on a map on Google Maps, see if you can figure out where they are so you can go visit. I'd love to hear if you do this. Uh, I know there's lots of people out there that went traveling somewhere for the summer. I've seen several people that did visit, you know, their ancestral homelands. It's a really powerful experience and something that I am so grateful I was able to do. There was many instances on our trip when I felt those ancestors close. Some of note are my great great grandfather was a choir a chorister, a choir director at a church and we were able to go inside the church and sing and my mom, she's also a chorister. She led us in singing, a choir director, and she she led us singing, and and it was a powerful experience. There was multiple times that were like that that I I knew that these ancestors were close, that they were proud of us, proud of their descendants, and grateful for us to come and honor them and see what their life was like. It was a really eye-opening experience and I feel much more connected to this branch of my family tree at one quarter of my family tree lived there for probably hundreds of years and it was really uh, a neat experience to be able to explore there and see what their life might have been like there so I encourage you to to do that again like I said at the beginning don't have to travel far. If your ancestors lived close, find where they lived close and explore and go to the land and feel the strength of your ancestors that is there. So thanks so much for listening and watching today. I am grateful for you and the interest that you have had in this trip that I went on. I had many messages on Instagram come in seeing, saying how cool it was and how interesting it was to see the places that I visited. I have a lot more on my Instagram page if you want to see videos or I have a highlight bubble on there that you can see the different places that we visited on the trip. But just wait, before you go, I have a new online course called Know Your Family Tree that is launching starting on September 5th. Now, this is a six-week online course where you will get a pre-recorded lesson for six weeks along with a weekly Q&A where you can ask any questions. And this course is to help you get started building your family tree. Or if you already have a family tree, it's to help you actually use it and build it and know how to research and find records about your ancestors. 
I know I'm very lucky to have so much information about my family on a family tree. And that is that family tree that I primarily use is on Family Search. It's a great collaborative family tree that then you can share with your family. You don't all have to have your own separate trees. You can share and work together and it's really easy to use. And that is what I'm going to show you primarily how to build your tree on the collaborative family tree on Family Search and how to use that whole website, how to find records and how to keep the memories and documents of your ancestors kind of contained on that site. I'll also have bonus videos for how to use a tree on Ancestry because it is helpful to have a separate tree just because the Family Search tree is collaborative. But I'll also have other bonus videos about how to get your tree from Family Search if you have a tree on Family Search on to Ancestry and lots of other technical things that are helpful to know as you're building and connecting to your ancestors. So go check that out. The link is in the show notes. But if you just go to my website, knowyourancestors.co, you'll find a button right at the top of the website to purchase that course. So go check it out. I would love to have you be a part of this uh, first launch of this online course. It's going to be available uh, after that. But it would be great to have you there that first time around to really get more help from me. You will have lifetime access to the course and so that you can go back whenever you want and, and look over those lessons. All right. So thanks so much for listening today. Thank you for being a part of this community and I will see you next time.